Hey there, welcome back. Or if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Katie and this is Louisiana Cooking and Living. And today we're starting out in the garden because we have got so much coming in. Um, well, I say so much. Zucchini and cucumbers are coming in like crazy. And I was just wanted to give you a little bit of a update before we get into the kitchen and cook something with all that zucchini. So let's look and see what all we have um, almost ready to um, harvest and start canning so much with you guys. So let's take a look. So we had a big storm the other night and we have a little bit of damage. I'm out of twine for tying up, but we have so many little Roma tomatoes coming in here. All these plants, Roma tomatoes. And um, these two tomato plants were kind of volunteer. I threw them in the compost pile here behind when I was um, planting out and I'd had too many plants. I threw them in the compost pile. They were the small ones and they have fruit coming on those as well. So these are our beefsteak tomatoes. And we have, let's see if you can see, some big fruit coming in on here as well. And these tomatillos, y'all, I am so ready to make some salsa. We have so many fruit almost ready to harvest here the peels are starting to crack so much fruit coming in so i'm so excited about all these and these big sunflowers i planted are finally peeking through hopefully we'll get some blooms soon these are some watermelon plants they're not doing as great as i thought that they would do and um, this is one of our squash. I think it's kind of seen the end of its days here. And then potatoes, another squash or zucchini plant here. This is um, some watermelon and cucumber. I guess I just don't remember how long they took to really take off. Here is one fruit, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off. Um, my husband said that he saw that you should pick off the first one so that um, it puts the energy into the vine growing and making it big and strong. Here's one of my zucchini plants and see, got a couple of zucchini there. Garlic is almost ready to harvest, I think. And this is a tomatillo plant that I think is a volunteer from last year. Let it go. Half this bed was onions, already harvested these and more tomatoes here. I have my basket here because I think I need to get this lettuce out of here. Um, I think it's about ready to bolt. So we're gonna get some of this lettuce to go with our dinner tonight. So we've got a good amount of lettuce here to go with some salad for dinner. So along this back wall here, we have some hay bales. We have some friends at church that told us about using these hay bales to plant in. And so we have done really good. We have a watermelon coming in right here. Did a few sweet potatoes along here. And then some tomatoes. I'm not sure. Okay, so down here we have some fruit on our tomatoes. And then for Mother's Day, my husband gave me this bench so I can look out, see my garden, see my chickens. Some more tomatoes. These are the pepper plants. First year I've grown cayennes, and I feel like we're doing pretty good here. We have quite a bit of fruit on the cayennes. If you can see them, they're still green. Got 
Got a nice Pablano growing right here. Basil's taken off well. I want you to see this giant sunflower that was a volunteer. He is probably nine feet tall. And the other day I counted 13 blooms on it. There could be way more, but he is huge. And he was a volunteer from last year. Again, some more huge, luscious zucchini plants. Get a little strawberry plants back there. This bed was my onions. I'll leave a little card at the top where I had harvested all these onions. So we have a good amount of onions, not a year's worth, but it's a good start on learning how to grow onions. These are my poor cucumbers. My husband said that he heard that if you wait till your cucumber is fully um, ripe to pick it, it makes the plant just die because it thinks it's done its job. So now we've learned that we have to pick our cucumbers early or they will not last. I'm loving these morning glories. I've grown up on my chiralis here. They're so pretty, they're pink and purple, along with some peas, or well, these are pinto beans actually. And again, here we have another zucchini plant. Let us see a couple of zucchinis peeking out in there. These zinnias. I didn't show these snapdragons. These snapdragons came back from last year. I didn't realize, I think last year they didn't even bloom. And here we are with this, this beautiful collection of them. The zinnias, I love flowers out in the garden. And these are all my purple hull peas on this side. All right, so we're gonna go get into the kitchen and make something with these zucchinis that I've been harvesting. Wow, it is already so hot out there. I'm a, let me see what the temperature is. Um, 88 degrees, full sun out there. It's already hot and we only have, you know, a lot of summer left. <laughs> it's just the middle of May. I have been um, making these electrolyte-ish drinks this is um, half orange juice, half coconut water, and um, about a quarter teaspoon of Redmond Real Salt to get some minerals going, vitamins, electrolytes. So this is refreshing when you're out in the hot sun. So I had to get some of that when we came in. All right, so what we're gonna do today is I'm trying to find different ways to eat all this zucchini. I plant all these zucchini plants because they are so prolific. They give us so much zucchini. But I'm not a huge fan of zucchini. Um, I shred it and make it in zucchini bread. I have roasted it at a very high temperature, um, used the slicer on my um, food processor, sliced it thin, sliced some onions, sliced some garlic, put it on a sheet pan with some olive oil, salt and pepper, threw it in the oven on a high temperature and roasted it. It kind of came out crispy. That was pretty good. My husband grilled it, kind of didn't like it like that. I also have, um, let me pull it out. I showed it to you in a different video, but if you didn't see that one, I did some pickled okra and I showed this in that video because it's a pickle. So I'll show you what I did. Hold on. So I got these pickles at Costco. And what I did was I just cut my zucchini in spears, put it in this brine, added some garlic cloves, some more dill from the garden. And these turned out really good, y'all. You can't tell the difference between a cucumber pickle and these. So that's a good option. And we're gonna try something else out today. Today what we're gonna do is make some zucchini with it. Instead of the noodles in our zucchini, we are gonna use um, in our lasagna. What did I even say? Today what we're gonna make is lasagna. And instead of the noodles, we're gonna use zucchini cut thin as that layer. And we'll try that out, see if I can eat it that way. I gotta find some ways to eat all the zucchini, y'all. We have so much of it. You can see this is zucchini and cucumbers back here. Um, so we have a lot and it's crazy because they will be on the plants like you saw out there in the garden today and then we have a big rain and the next day we have what my dad always called baseball bats. Let me grab one of them and show you. They get huge really fast when we have a good rain. So we have these big zucchinis that you don't even realize are on the plant and then the next day you go out there and you find this. So we got to do something with all this. So um, we're gonna do that. We're gonna make some lasagna and um, let's just get started. All right, I have two big ones. I'm not sure how much we're gonna need. 
I have a little plate here to put my scraps on for the chickens so we're not letting that go to waste. And we're just gonna slice this um, pretty thin. Trying to decide if I should peel it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna peel it. But I'm gonna slice it vertically like this so that I can try to get straight down. There we go, that's a pretty slice. So this is what we're looking for. Trim this one up a little bit. There we go. Let's get this monster. I don't mind wasting some of this for my chickens because we get it back in eggs. I think this very center slice with this, all the seeds in it, I'm gonna go ahead and give that to the girls also. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna salt these for a little while, let them sit to get some of that moisture out. So let me grab a sheet pan with a cooling rack on it. All right, so I'm gonna lay these out on here. I'm just using that cooling rack so that the water, the moisture can drip down and not, they won't just sit in that moisture. See if we can squeeze all this on here. All right, I'm just gonna sprinkle some salt on these. And in a few minutes, we'll flip them over and salt the other side, I'm guessing. I've never done this before. Just trying to figure it out. I know you do this with eggplant. All right. So while this is sitting, we're gonna move over to the stove and make our sauce. All right, so we have our Dutch oven heating up here. And I'm just gonna throw in a pound of ground meat. While this is starting to brown, we're gonna chop up a little bit of onion. This is an onion from the garden. Not big, but they're enough for one meal. If you can see the moisture that's coming out on top of these, I'm gonna go ahead and flip these over so they'll drip onto the sheet pan and we'll salt this side also. And then after we let these sit, we'll pat them dry. All 
right, we're starting to get some nice brown bits on our meat. We need to season all of our layers. So we're gonna add some salt to this. garlic to this. All right, next we're going to add our spaghetti sauce. You can use whatever spaghetti sauce you like, uh, make, you know, homemade in the pot. This I canned up with you guys back in January, so I'm going to go ahead and add this. If you're using jarred spaghetti sauce, I highly recommend you adding some more herbs to it, some basil, oregano, red pepper flakes, and even a little bit of sugar to take away the acidity. It doesn't take much sugar. It's just not to make it sweet, it's just to take away that acidity. All right, so while this simmers, we're gonna get together our ricotta layer. All right, so I shredded two pounds of mozzarella in my food processor. I didn't think y'all needed to see that. If you wanna buy your cheese already shredded or whatever. So we got that shredded. Be very careful if you're using a food processor, it's very sharp. Oops. And we're gonna put about eight ounces of it in a measuring cup here to make our ricotta layer. That might be more than I need in there. Let's say, let's say about a cup, maybe. I feel like I have cheese everywhere now. All right, let me get the rest of the stuff I need for this. All right, so we're gonna use a container of ricotta. This is 15 ounces. And we might not use all this, but I'm thinking with it being a cheese, you could probably freeze it. To this, we're gonna add some garlic. I know I like me some garlic and I have to put a lot of garlic in everything I make. We're gonna add some salt and pepper. And then some oregano and basil and I accidentally grabbed my Mexican oregano so I need to get my Italian oregano. I know I've showed y'all these before, but Trader Joe's has these organic spices for $2 a bottle. These are like five, six, seven dollars at Walmart. 
I just keep saying things like that because it just amazes me. And I just want to pass along these good deals to you also. Like my garlic cloves I get at Costco, organic, already peeled garlic cloves, three pounds of it. I think it's up to $10, but still it's a really good deal. My garlic freezes beautifully. All right, so this layer is done. All right, so let's do a little zucchini now. I'm gonna pat it dry. Flip them over and pat the other side dry. Quite a bit of water came out of these. I'm a, that's very promising. And the next thing we're going to do to even draw out more moisture is we are going to flash not fry these we're just gonna do them in the skillet with some olive oil you could throw them on the grill if you want to do it that way my friend that i was talking to about doing this that's how she does it is she throws them on the grill but my husband is the griller and not me so he is not here so we're going to do these in the skillet with the olive oil all right let's move back over to the stove top and that'll be the last of our layers to get ready so I have this heating on a little bit of maybe medium high, just above medium. A little bit of olive oil on the bottom. We have our sauce over here simmering. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off though. Hopefully these don't splatter too much because there is still a little moisture on them. I don't want them to steam in here either. So I don't want to overcrowd my pan. Maybe we'll turn our burner up a little bit. I have another sheet in here with um, the cooling rack to put them on when we're finished. So again, they don't steam. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 350. Make sure there's nothing in it. Kind of wanting to get a little bit of color on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep flipping these and we'll just go through all these and we'll have all of our layers ready and then we will get busy layering. All right, so we have all of our components here. We have our little pan. I'm not doing a huge amount of this in case we don't like it for whatever reason. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure. All right, so we have all of our components here. We have our little pan. I'm not doing a huge amount of this in case we don't like it for whatever reason. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure my husband will eat this. People will eat this. I just don't want to do a whole lot right now. So I'm going to do a little bit of the, more of the wet part of the sauce on the bottom. Just kind of labeling it off the top. Just to make a base here. If you want to make this completely vegetarian, you could leave out the ground meat. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, like we do a regular lasagna, we're gonna start with our noodle layer, which will be our zucchini. Got some pretty color on this. Right. 
Next, we'll put some sauce on. Next, we're gonna dollop some of our ricotta mixture on here. All right, I'm gonna sprinkle some of this mozzarella on here. Just gonna do a little bit because there's mozzarella mixed into the ricotta just to kind of fill in the gaps here. And then while we were out in the garden, um, before I came in, I went on and picked some fresh basil and oregano. I'm just gonna lay some of these leaves on here. All right, we'll do our next noodle layer. All right, we'll put some more sauce on. So this was one pound of meat and this gave us basically two layers of sauce, just to kind of give you an idea. And this is um, a seven by 11 dish. Just go ahead and put the rest of the sauce on here. It'll get down the nooks and crannies. Some more of these basil leaves underneath the cheese layer. I don't want them to brown. My husband's actually out of town. He might be a little upset that he's not here for this tonight. this oregano there's nothing like fresh herbs just the basil hitting that hot sauce makes it smell so good all right we'll dollop this around again so I wasn't sure we'd use that whole container but Looks like we're going to end up using it all. Try to spread that around. Again, we'll cover it with the mozzarella, and this time I'll do a oh, generous helping of the mozzarella.
All right, we'll get this in the oven. And we'll clean up our mess. I hate having counters covered with stuff. All right, like I said, our oven is pre-350, and I will let you know, I guess, when I pull it out, how long it was in the oven. Um, everything's cooked, I just have to get hot and bubbly. I'm gonna say 20, 25 minutes, but I'll let you know if I remember. And uh, we'll see you when it's ready. All right, let's see how this zucchini lasagna turned out. I'm really excited about this, op this um, alternative. I let it cool a little bit, hoping it would kind of set up some. One thing I'm noticing is the, um, the oil that cooked out of the cheese possibly um, didn't have the noodles to absorb it. So I am noticing that as a difference. Don't want to lose all my sauce here. I see some of the zucchini there. Let me get some of that. Definitely want to try it because that's the important part in this recipe. Garnish it with a few little basil leaves here on the top. And we'll give this a taste test. Y'all, it smells so good. I'll make sure I'm gonna get some of the zucchini on here on my little bite. Cheesy, meaty. All right. Just now I'm gonna burn myself. All right, let's get this bite. Y'all, that's really good. You would never know Put that is zucchini instead of noodles. I'm so excited about this little option we have here. Sorry, there was a truck going by and I thought the dogs were gonna start barking. This was a great option, y'all. The zucchini noodles, you cannot tell a difference. I don't, they're not noodles, but you know, the, the slices of zucchini, you cannot tell a difference between that and a noodle. This is a great option. If you have an abundance of zucchini in your garden or you just wanna have something a little healthier and gluten-free maybe, I just hope you give this a try. Let me know in the description, uh, the comment box below if you do give this a try and what you think about it. Or if you have any other copycat, or not copycat, um, recipes to incorporate zucchini, let me know because I need, have so many zucchini I need to cook up. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.